Seven minutes in, we pick up pocket aces and high jack. I like how this is starting out. A player in middle position raises to 22. That's already a large opening size. It's over seven times the amount in the big blind. The price is about to go up even more. We three bet to 65. I'm feeling a little bit chilly. Could be because the AC is turned up pretty high, or it could be because the cutoff comes in cold with a four bet to 170. I'm confused. I double check my calendar just to confirm it's not our birthday because people are trying to gift us all their money. The initial preflop raiser five bet jams and has us covered. We're going nowhere. I call. The cutoff has about the same amount as us in the stack. He also calls. It's a three way all in right at the start of the session. I turn over the aces because I'm not gonna slow roll people. I know that we're best right now. We're gonna need to hold though. Oh, wakes up at eight. First day in the place. That's not good. Before even knowing what my opponents have, I'm not happy to see the King Jack 10 flop with two spades because it's very likely one of our opponents drilled a set. My suspicions are confirmed as I look to my right. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, Quads. Oh, wow. What do you have? Hey, King. I said, why are you nervous? You win every game you play. Jiggities. Nice hand, man. Wow. Less than 10 minutes in, we get stacked with pocket aces against my own hand. Jiggities wins a huge 500 big blind pot. It's not exactly how I wanted to start things off, but it's still early. We've got plenty of time to recuperate the first buy-in. Next, we're dealt pocket sixes in the small blind. The hijack limps in. The button calls. We've got a hand with a lot of potential. I prefer to see a flop cheaply from this position rather than a raise. Likely get called in two spots and have to play a much larger pot from out of position when we won't improve most of the time. I call for two more. The big blind checks his option. We're going four ways to the flop. We don't make a set. The dealer puts out Jack Jack 6 with two clubs. We've got a full house and a multi way pot. On second thought, maybe we should have bet pre flop after all. It hasn't even been 45 minutes and we've already been involved in several interesting hands. Checks to the button. He's a sport. He does his best impression of an iceberg by running into a boat with a bet of 15 into a pot of 12. We want to keep all his bluffs in. I slow play with the call just like I know my girl Rose would. We can't let everyone know just yet that we've got the goods. The big blind and the hijack fold. It's heads up. The turn is the four of spades. It's a blank unless the button is playing the Robbie, which wouldn't be all that surprising. I check. The button falls right into our trap. He fires for 30. This is the point where we'll make our move. I slide in a raise to 110. Trip Jack certainly won't be folding. The opponent may even call with a flush draw, even though I wouldn't advise doing that on a paired board because in instances like this, flush draws are drawing dead. The button takes his time, then eventually makes the call. This turned into a large pot. I'm rooting for a low club. The river is the five of spades. We've got 388 left in our stack. The opponent has us covered by a million after making quad jiggities against us earlier that we need to repay him for. And by that, I mean get him to pay us. I don't mind checking in this situation because a hand like trip jacks may still value bet and hands like miss clubs won't be able to call a bet, but they may fire as a bluff. It seems unlikely that miss clubs will fire after I called more than a pot size bet on the flop and check raise turn. So I rip it in to target trip jacks. The opponent doesn't immediately lay his hand down, he may be thinking about calling. I get my stack out there bit by bit. After 15 seconds, the button folds. I didn't get the sense that he had a very tough decision, he almost certainly didn't have trips. I let the table see that we flopped a boat. I've never been very worried about showing people my hands at the table, otherwise I never would have started the YouTube channel. Just two hands later, I pick up Ace King offsuit on the button. It's trouble for the rest of the table that I've got a real hand immediately after showing that I was willing to get it all in for a good amount with basically air right before. A player in middle position raises to 10. There's a great opportunity for me to capitalize on my wild image. The initial preflop raiser started the hand with a stack of 700. He has my 580 covered. I three bet jam for almost 200 big blinds. I make it called by a variety of worse aces. The small blind only has 180 total. I mentioned before that the tickets alone are worth somewhere around that amount, so if he jams any two cards, it'll basically be profitable for him. The small blind indeed rips it in. A ticket will be awarded to him regardless of who wins the hand. The player in middle position folds pocket fours face up. Just too much money to risk. I'm glad to see that hand go into the muck. It's down to just us and the small blind. We both flip our hands over. We see that we have the small blind's ace jack off suit crushed. Pocket fours would have been in good shape against our exact holdings. The flop comes 10 8 deuce with two clubs. We've got the ace of clubs. Neither of us make a pair though. The turn is the nine of diamonds, giving the opponent an open ended straight draw. The river is another deuce. We get what would have been the winner to fold pre flop. We stack the player on our left. The small blind at least gets a consolation prize. Thanks, man. He gets a ticket though. He does get a ticket. Pretty unfortunate for the opponent to wake up with ace jack offsuit in that situation. 
is a couple hands too late. We get to absorb his stack into ours. He gets a shot at a prize worth more than $10,000. Fair enough trade. Here we've got ace three suited in the cutoff. The hijack raises to 15. I should be three betting, but I call. The button is an awesome viewer named Zach from Fresno. He sees some easy money up or grabs and puts in a three bet to 60. That's too much for the hijack. He folds. We could reasonably fold ace three suited, but we're not gonna. I call for 45 more. We're heads up out of position in a three bet pot. The flop comes 866 with two diamonds. We completely brick it and are planning to fold if the button bets almost anything. I check. We still have life as the opponent checks back. We may only have over cards to the board. The turn is the three of hearts. We pair a card in our hand. That's something that's normally good to do in poker. Now we probably have the best hand. I check. The opponent checks back. I'll feel very good about where we're at. The button does check back. I don't get the sense that he has anything, and I try to let him know as the river comes out. Got you beat. <laughs> I make it 25, kind of as a value blocker bet. It's extremely annoying to face this type of bet when you have something like ace king on this board because you figure you're probably beat, but you're getting a million to one, so you don't want to fold, even though you're losing with a call nearly 100% of the time. A tiny bet doesn't look strong, so you contemplate raising as a bluff, but your story wouldn't make a ton of sense. This may not stop the button, Looks like he's about to do something wild. Deep in the tank? The opponent raises to 125. The only hand that he really seems to be representing is ace jack or king jack. We have removal to ace jack. I don't think he'd necessarily three bet those holdings pre flop 100% of the time either. What seems most likely to me is that we broke the opponent with our bet sizing and the CPU might have malfunctioned. He knows that he can't win the pot by calling probably sends his weakness and is trying to make a last ditch effort to steal some Bradley dollars and take him back to Fresno, but I'm not buying his San Joaquin River raise. Mm. All right, I call. I how you win. Ah, I tried it. <laughs> oh, wow. The opponent tries to get one through on us with queen 10 of clubs. I like the effort and the guts it takes to make the move, but we pull the scruff McGruff to sniff out the bluff. Our Jedi mind trick at telling the opponent that we've got him beat as the river was coming out might have induced the opponent to take a line that didn't make a ton of sense if we capitalize on it. At our seventh table of the day, we pick up pocket kings and the hijack. I raised to 15. There's only one customer, the big blind calls. We're heads up in position. The flop comes king nine seven rainbow. We've got top set with a lot of straight draws present. The opponent checks. We won't be slow playing this. I bet 15. The big blind thinks that's a fair price. He calls. The turn is the six of spades. 10, eight and eight five both make straights. Big blind checks. We'll be betting until we get raised, even with the somewhat scary turn card. I make it 45. Plenty of worse hands can still call, like lower sets, two pair hands, 9 8 and 8 7 type of hands, even jack 10. The big blind calls. I'd like to avoid seeing a 10 8 or 5 on the river. The dealer puts out the deuce of clubs. It's a total blank. The opponent checks. Straights are vulnerable hands, so he probably would have checked raised turn if he had a speed with the straight. We're almost for sure holding the winner. The tricky part now is extracting as much money as possible. There aren't many kings left in the deck for the opponent to have, so I won't even target top pair. I'm going to target two pair hands, and I'm going to size way up to make it look like I'm trying to buy the pot. I bet 210. Hopefully, it'll look like I miss with Jack 10. We may even get looked up by second or third pair if he just doesn't believe that we're as strong as we are. Looks like he's incredibly suspicious of us, but it doesn't have much. He's in the tank for a long time, just sitting there quietly, then after 45 seconds, he breaks the silence. Yeah. Ooh, scary. I couldn't want to call more, but I'm trying to look a little nervous on the outside. You don't want to overdo it though. After a minute goes by, the opponent finally lays it down. Good pull, good pull. Oh my god. <laughs> Monster. It's going in the block. There haven't been too many significant pots that have gone our direction today. This one isn't even all that large since we don't get paid. The opponent would later tell me that he was considering making the hero call with 10-6. He flopped a gut shot straight draw and turned fourth pair. That would have been sweet. I'm notified that a seat has opened up to play with Phil Ivey at the 1-3 table. I immediately take it. I played with Ivey once before in a high stakes 100-200 game when I got my biggest cash game win ever of 48,000. I've been watching Phil on TV since I was 15. He's one of the people in poker that I've looked up to the most. It's always exciting just being around him. We get involved in a big pot together, the very first hand I play at the table. It's good, man. What do you got, 600? I, I, I had to start with five. Okay. Jesus, <laughs> I, I mean, what? <laughs> all right, let's go. Let me catch you up on the action. 
Coming from 2.5, I had to set aside the majority of my chips and start the hand with 500 because that's the max of 1.3. Phil surprisingly limps in from under the gun. We've got Ace-9 suited in the hijack and raised to 15. You heard the exchange that I had. Phil limp 3-bet jams for 500 effective. There are a couple thoughts running through my head. The first is, what the hell is Phil doing this with? I'm completely caught off guard and just trying to compose myself because I'm feeling how I imagine I would if Michael Jordan was around. I was just kind of hoping that we get a few easy decisions early on at the table so I can feel more comfortable. Instead, I'm immediately thrown into the fire. It seems more than possible Ivy just doesn't care about $500, is willing to 3-bet rip it for fun, or to put me to the test and make a statement that he's the one that's going to be pushing people around. It seems similar to when I 3-bet jammed with Ace-6 suited in the 1-3 earlier. We've got removal of the hands like pocket aces and ace king. If he doesn't have aces, I'll have minimally around 30% equity if I'm not already ahead. I couldn't pass up an opportunity to gamble all in with Ivy, especially at low stakes, so I called. All right, fella, so what do we got? You got the jiggities. Okay. Ivy completely scrambled my brain with a limp three bet jam. I get it in behind with only a 31.9% chance of winning and doubling up to the person who's widely regarded as the best poker player of all time. The flop comes queen 6-6, six, six. we don't improve and are going to need a lot of help. The turn is the 10 of hearts that doesn't do anything for us, it's down to one final card. The river is another queen, Ivy's hand holds. I get a not so nice welcome to the table, a memory that I'll never forget, and a lesson from the legend, there's not much for me to do other than admit that I got got by the goat. First charity, now me, Ivy's putting on a clinic. Five minutes later, we look down at 9-8 of hearts in the big blind. Under the gun plus two raises to 10, the hijack three bets to 35. Ivy cold calls in the cutoff, usually I'd fold in the situation, but we've got a playable hand, and need to get revenge against Ivy. I call for 32 more. Under the gun plus two also calls, we're going four ways to the flop out of position in a three bet pot. It comes jack nine six with two clubs, we've got middle pair and a backdoor straight draw. Everyone plays this cautiously, we all check. Middle pair could be best. The turn is the deuce of spades, it's a blank. I don't want this to check through again and allow someone an opportunity to hit a higher pair on the river if they have a hand like ace king or ace queen. I take a stab out at betting 70. I expect this bet to win a decent percentage of the time. If I get called, I'll probably check fold on most rivers. Under the gun plus two folds, the hijack also folds. The last player remaining is Ivy, he makes the call. He may have some sort of drawing hand like queen 10 or king queen, Maybe two clubs. The river is the king of hearts. I'm no longer beating queen 10, king queen, or king high flush draws. I check with intentions of giving up. Ivy checks back. We turn over third pair. Ivy shows that he has the same pair as us, but he has 10-9 offsuit and his 10 kicker plays, so he wins one more pot from me. It hasn't been easy to win hands. Still, it's one of the coolest poker experiences that I've ever been a part of. 